So this video, we're going to be making a create endpoint for our event. We need to be able to create events. And right now we don't have a way to do that. So first thing, let's create a event service first. I think we could create a controller, but if we don't have a service, it's probably not going to do us any good. So let's go into here and let's create a event service ample for the class and then let's just create an event service for the interface so i'm going to go into here and i'm going to go to interface and i'm going to call this event service okay so that looks good what we're going to need obviously is a create endpoint in our create endpoint we're not going to return anything so we're just going to take in a long of the club id and then we're going to pass up the event DTL. So if we want to create an event, we need to pass up an event DTL. So this looks good. And we're going to go ahead, put a semicolon right here. And we're going to go to the event service and we are going to go ahead and implement it. So we're going to go implements and event service and go ahead to our red uh, light bulb right here and then go ahead bring in the create event and now we need to bring in both our event repository and our club repository so we're going to go in here and we're going to have an event repository and we'll have event repository right here then we'll have private and then we will have our club repository just like this so club repository and we will also need a constructor so we're going to get here go here go to generate we're going to go to constructor going to bring in both of these repositories and we will also add an auto wired although we don't really have to so to create an event is going to be a process to where we are going to take the event and we are going to tie it to the club entity because remember it's a one-to-one -one. so we need the club ID if we are going to create an event. Very simple. So we're going to go club here, and then we're going to go to our club repository, and we're going to find that club by its ID. If so, that so that hopefully should make sense to you. If that doesn't make sense, let me just kind of clear things up just a little bit more, and I'll show you why we need this club ID. So. If we go to our clubs column, and I'm just going to go ahead and refresh all this data here. Uh, what you will see is you will see key. So we have keys and we have indexes. Uh, what you're going to notice is that in the event, you're going to have a pro what's called a foreign key. So if we go here, we go to the foreign key. What's going to happen is you're going to have this club ID. And if we're going to create an event, we need that one-to-many relationship since so that is why we have whenever we are creating event we need to have that club id so that we can tie it together with our actual uh event table so if you look here our event table has that club id and that's why we're actually adding it and then also we need to add a get right here because it's an optional okay so hopefully that cleared some things up now we need an event. So we're going to go to our event and we are going to map this event DTO to an event. We want to take, take this DTO and we want to turn it into a regular event. And we don't, we need to make a mapper. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down here and I'm just going to make a mapper really quick. So I'm going to go down here and I want an event back. So I'm going to create an event. So I'm going to say map to event. And we're going to, of course, take in an event DTO. We're gonna uh, have a parameter as an event DTO. Go ahead here, bring in this with alt enter. And we're remember, we're returning an event. We want to map this to an event. So you want to return an event. And the way that we do that is we use event builder dot build. We could do it another way, but I think it's really easy with just these builders. Then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to have event DTO and we're going to get the ID and we're just going to do the exact same thing for the rest of these. So we'll have name, we'll have event DTO, we'll have get name, go down to the exact same thing. And I'm going to 
go ahead bring it bring my event DTO over here and I'm going to close this so that I can see all of what I need to map so I have a name and also have a start time so we'll say start time and event DTO dot get the start time then we're going to do the same exact thing we're going to have an end time so end time so we'll have event DTO dot get end time then I'm going to go down here we're going to have club or uh we should actually type so we'll do type and we'll have event DTO then we will have get type also here for the event I added a photo URL so we also need to add the photo URL too so I'm going to say string then we have the photo URL right here and I'm also going to add that so type we we'll go down here and this is going to be the photo URL we'll have event DTO dot get photo URL then we'll also have the created on so we'll have created on event DTO dot get created on and dot updated on DTO dot get updated on okay so that looks good now we are going to take this and actually pass it into the function that we made up here so we have map to event and it's going to map that DTO and then we're going to have the event and then we're going to also set the club so we also need to add this club to it remember we need to add the club that we went and got by the find by ID and we're going to add it to this actual event and then all that we're going to do is we're going to go into our event repository we're going to do a good old save and Hopefully this should do everything for us in terms of the service. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create an event controller. Uh, we only have a club control right now, so we need to create our event controller. So we're going to here and we're going to say event controller. We'll have a class and we'll go up to here, annotate this with controller. Okay. So that's going to give us a lot of functionality and as always, we need to bring in our service. We created our service in order to actually be able to use all of these nice little service methods that we have. So what we're going to do into here is we're going to generate this. So we're going to go into uh, the constructor, generate, and go ahead and inject our service. And it's giving us a red squiggly line because I don't have uh, the service annotation added to my event service. So I'm going to go to my... Uh, event service impl and if you notice here if you look very carefully i have a service annotation on top of my club service but not my event service so what i'm going to do into here is go in copy and paste that service on there so i can go and get rid of my error then after this we are good to go now we can actually start creating our uh, form so that we can actually create the club. So what we're going to do is we're going to have just a good old fashioned get mapping. We'll have events. We'll have the club ID. So you'll pass in the club ID to the top right here. And then we will have the word new to denote that this is where we, we are creating or uh, yes, creating a new event. So we're going to go public now string and we'll just call this create event form and this is where we're going to view it and this will have a path variable so we'll have a path variable of club id we'll have long club id we'll have model and we'll have model okay that looks great and then we'll go down here and we'll close out this event DTO make sure that all of this has been brought in then we will go down and we will begin actually creating this and I'm gonna make sure that that's spelled correctly okay so we are good to go all right first we're going to new up an event we don't actually have an event object to pass to anything so we're just going to go ahead and new up an event object just so that we have something to be able to pass to the view 
Then we're going to go down here and we're going to add a model attribute. So we're going to add two. You can add as many as you want to. We're going to add a club ID so that we can pass this club ID and we can actually uh, go get the club whenever we need it. And we're also going to add another attribute for the event so that if we do have an, an edit event, we can actually <clears throat> uh, add that if we want to. Then we'll go down here and we'll say clubs, uh, or no, let's actually call this events. And we'll just call this create. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go down to our templates and let's just create one from our clubs create and just copy everything over. So I'm gonna go over here and add an HTML file and I'll go over to the HTML file and I'll say events, we'll say create. Then I'm just gonna copy everything over from the clubs create over so that we can also get the layout as well too. So I'm gonna get rid of everything within this actual section right here. We don't actually need any of this and I just need to test if it's actually working. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of this and go ahead and refresh it. And when I do that, I get this page. So we are good to go. Let's actually start wiring up the form itself. So we've got our get endpoint and we've got our HTML set up. What we need to do now is we need to actually create all of the form fields for our HTML and we need to create the post endpoint so that we can send everything back to the server. Luckily for us, we already have this clubs.create with a lot of the fields that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into here and copy everything from the container div all the way down to right before the section. Go over here, copy and paste it into here so that we can kind of have something to work off of and change everything around. And then I'm also going to take the DTO, the event DTO, and put it to the side here so that we can kind of just go through here and name everything out individually. So first, I have a name right here. Once again, I'm just gonna go through here and start swapping all of this stuff out. So it's got a name, I'm gonna go to the name, I'm gonna change this out. It's got a, a placeholder, so I'm just gonna give this an event name, so that looks great. Then here, I'm gonna go down, do same exact thing. Just go ahead, start swapping everything out, making sure that it is matched up with my event DTO because this is what I'm basing all this stuff off of. So next, I have a type, and I'm just gonna go through here. I'm gonna go type, so go ahead, add this. Also change here, so we have the type, and change this out. Pretty simple stuff. And we'll call this event type. Then I'm gonna go through here, do the same exact thing. Not rocket, not rocket science in any way, super simple stuff. Once we have everything named, it's, it's pretty simple to just kind of go through here and change everything. Okay, so we also have our photo URL. So photo URL right here, change this out. So photo URL, photo URL, change, go ahead, change this out. So this looks good. Change this out. So photo URL and also photo, photo URL. Okay, that looks good so far. The next is that we're going to have our start times and our end times. So also need to change the ID. So now what we need to do is we also need to add our start times and our end times. So we also need to make a date and a time. And luckily for us, so what we're gonna do is we're going to add a type of date time local. So we'll, we'll have date time local right here. And this will allow us to add a calendar and we'll this will be the start time. So whenever you want your running club to start, it will this will be the start time. And we're gonna do the exact same thing, except this is going to be a date time local type. Okay, so we have start time, the exact same thing. I'm just gonna go through here and copy and paste this because this will be a lot easier and a lot speedier if I just copy and paste it. So same exact thing, except it's going to be the end time. So we also need to include the end time. And I'm gonna go down here, gonna copy this, go ahead and add this. And it's going to be end time. So go end time, end time. And same exact thing, I'm just gonna go through here, copy and paste all of this. 
So it is the end time. And actually going to change this to something a little more human legible. So we are also gonna have to go over and add this to the start date and end time. So we are also gonna have to go over to the DTO and add the date time format to the start time and the end time. Otherwise it will give an error because it's not anticipating this start uh, date time local format. So if you want to have the start time, the date time local uh, format and the ability to add the start time and the end time, you need to add this date time format in order for it to work. So next and the last thing is that we're gonna go through here and we're going to make our post endpoint. And luckily for us, this is going to be pretty easy to do. It's just a pretty simple post. So we're just gonna go in here and make a post mapping. So go here, and we're going to say post mapping. And this post mapping is going to have a URL of events. And we will go ahead and pass the club ID on the end, just like this, pretty simple. We'll go down here, we'll say public string. We'll have create event and it will have a path variable. So we'll have path variable. Go ahead, close out this DTO. And the path variable will be, of course, club ID. And it will have a long of club ID. And also we need to pass in our model. So we're gonna have a model attribute. And this model attribute is going to be called event. And we're going to pass in our event DTO. And we'll have event DTO right here. And we'll also have our model model. Simple enough. MVC is pretty simple once you get used to it. Okay. So we're going to go down here and then we're going to bring in our event service <clears throat> and we're going to save it. So all of that code that we made is now coming in handy. So we'll have our event DTO go down here and return the redirect of clubs. So if it does go through, if the save is successful, we're going to redirect back to our clubs and we're going to redirect back to the club ID. So we're going to re redirect back to our detail page. And lastly, what we need to do is we need to create a link so that we can actually be able to access this create event. And the way that we're going to do that, we're going to go into our club detail, our club detail. And right after the delete, we are going to add it down here. So instead of the clubs ID, what we're going to have is we're going to have the events and then we're going to pass in the club ID and we're going to give it the new. Okay. And we are going to say create event. And once we actually get security and users added, we'll be able to add this so that only the owners of the club can actually add events. So the next part is that the URL for the post endpoint is sending to clubs when we need to send it to events. Also, we're wired up for a club object when it really is an event object. So let's get this taken care of. We need an event right here and we also need to pass this to the events, uh, just the events, not the clubs new because this is not a club. So we're going to have events and we are going to pass in the club ID right here. And also we need to add the club ID because the club ID is being passed in our club controller as a model attribute. So if you look into our actual get mapping here, if I can pull, pull it up in my event controller and our club ID is being passed to our events create. So if you go into here, you'll see our club ID our club ID is being passed. Our event ID is being passed. So let's go ahead, hit the run button, and let's just see if we can actually get one of these events created. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to some random club. I'm going to go to my Charlotte running club, edit. I'm going to go to my create event. I'm going to just give this a bunch of uh, just regular values, got a couple training in the morning, and then I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna start the end time to 7.30 today, which is actually right now, 7.30 a.m., and then I'm gonna set it so that it ends one minute later. <laughs> it's a marathon that's gonna end one minute after the start. So we're gonna go ahead, hit create, and that looks good to go. So let's go ahead and test it, or let's go ahead to our events and make sure that we've actually got data in there. And if you look, I tested it a couple times before, we've actually got data in our database 
for our events. Now what we need to do is we need to actually start creating ways to see the events within our clubs. Anyways, that's going to be the video for today. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to... Anyways, that's going to be the video for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.